Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video we're going to be talking about white blood cell production which is otherwise known as leukopoiesis and we're also going to be talking about its regulation as well. So white blood cells otherwise known as leukocytes uh, have the role of aiding the defense against microorganism infections. So it's the, it's the body's mechanism of defending against some form of microorganism infection. So we have two types of leukocytes or white blood cells. They are agranular leukocytes, which have a lifespan of 100 to 300 days. And we also have granular leukocytes as well. And they have a lifespan between 12 hours to three days. And obviously there's different subtypes of agranular leukocytes and granular leukocytes as well. And we're going to be making a separate video which focuses just on the different subtypes and their functions. So the link to that will be in the description below this video. So the production of different subtypes of leukocytes are stimulated by chemicals called cytokines. And what cytokines are are autocrine regulators which are secreted by various cells of the immune system. Okay, so that's what a cytokine is, and the cytokine is responsible for helping to differentiate the different types of um, leukocytes. Now, we're going to look at the, um, the generation of white blood cells from the beginning step of a hemocytoblast. This is the first uh, multipotent hematopoietic stem cell which initiates the production of not only white blood cells, but red blood cells and also thrombocytes as well. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about the uh, production of white blood cells. So when we have a um, multipotent hemopoietic stem cell, otherwise known as a hemocytoblast, the location of it is in the bone marrow. And it can then progress and either form a common myeloid progenitor or a common lymphoid progenitor. Now the common lymphoid progenitor is responsible for producing the B and T lymphocytes and plasma cells and natural killer T cells and oops and the common myeloid progenitor is responsible for producing the granular leukocytes such as the basophil, neutrophil, eosinophil and you can also have the monocyte produced here as well. Alright so let's look at a basophil. So we have the multipotent well, we're just going to call this hemocytoblast. That's the short way of saying it. So we have the hemocytoblast. It then forms the common myeloid progenitor, and then it forms a myeloblast. From here, it can differentiate into the basophilic promyelocyte, then the basophilic myelocyte, then the basophilic metamyelocyte, then the basophilic band, and then it can form the basophil. If it's a neutrophil that we want to produce, from the myeloblast, it differentiates into the neutrophilic promyelocyte, then the neutrophilic myelocyte, and then the neutrophilic metamyelocyte, then the neutrophilic band, and then it forms the neutrophil. If you want to have an eosinophil from the myeloblast, it forms the eosinophilic promyelocyte, eosinophilic myelocyte, eosinophilic metamyelocyte and then the eosinophilic band and then finally the eosinophil. Now this is the process called granulopoiesis because this is just for the granular leukocytes. We also have production of a monocyte which is via the process monocytopoiesis and from the myeloblast we have the monoblast. From the monoblast we have the pro-monocyte, then the monocyte, and this is the process called monocytopoiesis, and from there it can differentiate into a macrophage or a myeloid dendritic cell. Okay, now going back, if you want to produce the agranular leukocytes, then the hemocytoblast here will differentiate not into the common myeloid progenitor, but to the common lymphoid progenitor. And from here, we can have the formation of a lymphoblast, then a pro-lymphocyte, and then either a natural killer T cell or it will form a small lymphocyte. And from here, it can differentiate into either a B lymphocyte or a T lymphocyte. And then obviously the B lymphocyte can also progress and form a plasma cell. And this is the process called lymphopoiesis. Now, a variety of cytokines stimulate different stages of this leukocyte development and as you know some of the processes will occur in the bone marrow some will occur in the blood and some will be in the tissue so the actual differentiation of the um, basophilic neutrophilic eosinophilic bands forming the basophil neutrophil and, and 
eosinophil. So the final stages of this granulopoiesis will occur in the blood. And then going forward, remember we have the cytokines which are responsible for helping to differentiate between the myeloblasts into these um, uh, basophils, neutrophils and eosinophils. So, so cytokines which are known as multipotent growth factor 1, interleukin 1 and interleukin 3 have general effects in stimulating development of different types of white blood cells. And some examples uh, which I have here, granulocyte colony stimulating factor helps to stimulate the development of neutrophils and granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor abbreviated as GMCSF stimulates the development of monocytes and eosinophils. 